Hi everyone, thanks to be here for this talk. Um, I'm super happy there are so many people because I will be talking about security. Um, it's pretty boring, it's pretty old, it's not about performance, no G-Link, no microservice, no nothing fancy, but I believe it's very important anyway. Uh, I'm Nicola Frankel, I've been doing consultancy as a developer for like more than 15 years and uh, recently I changed my life and now I'm paid to go to conferences, which you should try if you don't do it, it's really fun. Okay, um, well, you probably, since you are, I assume everybody here is a Java developer, uh, you probably know about the Reflection API, so let me show you some code, because I like to do code, and uh, it's not this one, it's this one, up. So here I've created a simple, super simple class, and uh, my, uh, my class foo has a private attribute, and of course, you cannot access it in Java, right? Right? No. No, nobody can access private field in Java. Unless you can. Yes, so uh, basically, where is the magic? Set accessible, yeah, line 11, set accessible. Who never used that dirty trick? Okay, so you know about <laughs> Ah, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> of course, of course. And uh, let me show you something else, because that one is easy, but this one was shown to me by my friend Volker here. This one is a bit harder. So who can read that code? It's perhaps too small, I will try to get it a bit bigger. So I'm trying to, to do the same stuff, but once I get an attribute, I get I get the field, I get the field of the field, and I get the type field. So basically you know that Java is a statically typed language, right? So if I try to print this hidden stuff, it should give me a hint. I, it prints a string. Goodbye, type safety. Well, shit happens, right? Oh, not this one. Not this one again. I cannot find it. This one. Okay, so this is reflection. And um, basically with reflection you can do a lot. And this trick is done by a lo lot of languages. This Reflection API <coughs> is used by Groovy, is used by Frameworks, just as Spring, is used by Hibernate, is basically used by any, like, any widespread language or, or framework on the GVM. So you cannot ignore that. You, you must cope with that. But actually, the, the GVM allows practically everything. You can make network calls. You can compile code on the fly. You can execute the same code on the fly. And perhaps it's not that a good idea, so what can we do to check that? Uh, the first like logical step A, we have static analyzers. We can check the code whether uh, it does something or not. Well, <laughs> static analyzers are not that great right now, so they can check for very, very limited kind of pattern. Bytecode analyzer go a bit further, but the problem is that you don't know what is the load or not in your case, so basically you must check the results every time. You can tell me, but code review can, can check that stuff. Yes, they can, unless the code is reviewed only by one guy, and I mean you are friends and he doesn't want to disturb you too much. Never happens, right? Of course. Security teams. Security teams can also be a, a great help in that. But with my experience, I have noticed there are two kinds of security teams. Is, is there anyone here working in security teams? I don't want to be offensive. No one? Okay, so I can be a bit offensive. No, actually, there, there are two kinds of security teams. They are the, the checkbox oriented one 
like you've got compliance and then you, you, you follow a list of rules and you check them. I mean, whether it's the truth or not is not relevant, but you can prove that you did the checks because you have an Excel sheet. And of course, they don't help much. They are more like to hinder you uh, or to, to be able to be audited. And uh, the good one, the good one that really can tell you, hey, here you might have a security issue in that, in that snippet of code. But unfortunately, because they are useful, well, they tend to be overused and they don't have time to help you with that. So you might be lucky once in a while, but in general, it's, it's not possible. And uh, perhaps you know about this little technique called steganography that is very funny. Um, basically, you hide a message into another message. So you have a, a video file and you hide a picture in it. Or you have a picture and you, add, you, you hide text in it. Uh, let me show you how it's done. So I have this picture of a cat. It's cute, it's harmless. What I will be doing, I will be hiding some code inside of it. So I can have this stuff, say good afternoon for them. I will hide something like X just to show you that it's done like that. I hide the code so I can show you the code. I'm using a steganography class here that I got on the internet. It's not very important. And then I can run the hidden code. And basically, this code just wave the main.txt content into this harmless kitten. And you see there is no difference between this harmless kitten and this harmless kitten. And now I can run the hidden code and basically what I'm doing here is I'm reading the picture, extracting the codes, and compiling the class and running the class on the fly. Pretty bad, right? It's not that great. And let me tell you about a simple process. Now what if I devise a library to read images? useful one, someone that you would use in your day-to-day -day job. So I could advertise it, publish it on Maven Central, and then I watch as everybody starts using it, and nothing happens. But then I decide at one point in time to add steganography features without telling anyone. And then because my project, or your project, or a friend's project, is also committing pictures, then I could like put some malicious code. And none would be the wiser. Even with static analyzer, even with security teams checking your, your code, because I mean, you might know what happened uh, in the NPM ecosystem. That there was one very widespread library, I don't remember what it did, but basically at one point the guy who was behind the library said, oh, I don't want to care about it anymore, who wants it? Then someone stepped in, and that was fine. But the guy who replaced, at some point, he added a, a Bitcoin mining stuff inside the library. So you would just give him money with your CPU. Could do exactly the same here. Who is afraid now? Not that many people, only one, two, three, and ah, not, not, not enough. So I have another demo to make you a bit more afraid. So here I've created a Spring application. Sorry about that. Um, and I have this application that basically just sends money over the wire. It's just a REST API, but basically it's pretty dead simple. I'm using this URL to transfer money from account one to another account with a certain amount. So if I run this stuff and I check the application here, it tells me, hey, you've transferred this amount of money. I can change the amount of money and I send it to someone else. Sorry? Okay, which number you want? <laughs> Okay, so yeah, 
And now, with the attach API, what I can do on the running GVM, I can change the bytecode that is running. Let me do it. So what I need to do, I just need to uh -oh, um, get the PID number. So this must be this one. I get the PID. This is my application, which basically is called ACK. Nothing happens. And now what I try to run that again. The GVM is still running. The bytecode has been changed on the fly. And the fun part, well, the fun depends for who, is that if I restart the application, I will stop it and rerun it. Ah, I don't have it anymore. Where is it? Here it is. Yes. So basically, it's the original bytecode again. So I left no trace. I mean, for an attacker, I'm not a security person, but for an attacker, that's pretty powerful. You just do stuff and you leave no trace. Now, who is afraid? A bit more people. That's good. But not yet enough, I believe. So, and, and the problem, the, the, there, is, there is a solution to that. I mean, there is a solution to that since ages. And that's why I'm telling you it's super old. That because if you remember, uh, you had applets before, a long time ago. Remember applets? Yeah, yeah, we are all old people here. And basically, the applets were meant to run in, in a sandbox because we knew that running code from the internet, I mean, untrusted code was not a good idea to run on your machine. So basically, you already had the sandbox, and the sandbox was provided by something called the security manager. Who knows about the security manager? Wow, a lot of people. Who uses the security manager? Wow, amazing. In general, I have no more than one guy. Here I have perhaps five. No, really, there are eight, five times more. It's a lot, it's a lot. And basically, this, this man security manager is based on the GDK. So basically, it, it, it checks the code inside of the GDK. Here, I will be very, very simple. I will just do it for a very simple policy file. So this is the structure of a policy file that you have a default policy file in the GDK, I advise you not to use the default one. I, use, uh, I advise you to use your own, one, your own and then to add every permission. So basically, you are telling A that for this jar, you will grant this foo permission with the foo parameter and with the bar permission with parameter bar and bars. So very straightforward. So if you know about the security manager and you don't use it, why? It's work. Who said that? Yeah, yeah, that's a problem. It takes a very long time to do a good policy file, especially since you want to apply the least privilege principle in security. You want to only to give the permissions that are enough to run the application. Like you don't see HMOD 777 just, before it just because it works. You just want to put the minimum amount of permissions and it's a lot of work. And because of that, probably nobody does it. And I hope that I can give you a solution for that, a working solution. <coughs> so I have a nice application here. I will stop this one. And I will use the Spring Pet Clinic. <coughs> so basically, the Spring Pet Clinic is just an application that is based on Spring that has a few screens. That is not a trivial application, it's a simple one. So I believe it's a good use case. So imagine we want to create a policy file for this stuff. So we start with a very simple policy file that I will remove yet up. 
just to show you how it it would be done in the the previous years. So you run it, you happen to stumble upon the first uh, exception, and then you say, oh, what the exception? Java util proper permission. Okay, I will add this one. Permission. Java util permission. And copy paste that. <laughs> and now, I think I'm not sure there must be a comma there or not. I don't remember. Yeah, another one. So each time I'm adding more permissions to get the minimum amount of permission that I need. Make sense to you? Yeah. Uh, no, uh, it's not this one. It's because I missed a comma. Yeah, I'm never sure of the format. So yeah, this one is good. And now I can do the same. I have the permission and here it needs write so I can write like that or I can <coughs> write like that. And because I think it's better like that, I do it like that. Up. And set factory. How 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 much time do still I have left? <laughs> Some hours, right? Yeah. I mean you you still I want to, to finish the file, right? So the final file, and I took some shortcuts. <laughs> and I took shortcuts, really. I, I took some shortcuts, which basically doesn't make the list minimum privilege file. So that's the problem. And I if you do it step by step like that, it's going to take a long time for any non-trivial application. And, 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 and another issue that every time you change your code, you cannot just add permission because perhaps you don't need that many permissions anymore. <laughs> so you need to start from scratch. And of course, if you change your framework or even upgrade a version of a dependency, guess what? You need to start from scratch again. So it's not that fun. However, there is a way to do that. Um, what we can do is we can have this settings. So I add the security manager. I set the security policy here. Just a comment. There are two equal signs because I don't want to add permission to the default set of permissions. I want to replace every permission. So because if, if the initial set of permission is compromised, then I, I, I want to not to be safe again that. And what I can do is I can debug every access. So every time the security manager is checked for permission, I can log it. There are duplicates. Yeah, let's be cool. Uh, that, that's good enough. And now, I started the application. I didn't run it yet. If I run it, I uh, have another set of permission that's, uh, that, will, that will be uh, requested. And so basically, what I, I can do with that log, I can devise an automated process that take this log file and create a limit, I mean a policy file out of that. I can remove duplicates file, I can do a, a lot of stuff. Normally, so this is yeah, something that I didn't mention is basically there is a permission called all permission. And that's what I used. Yeah, it seems pretty stupid actually to have a permission saying every permission possible. But with logging, it actually is usable to create a policy file with it. So it's very interesting. And now, with my final policy, I'm able not only to run the application, and now I've, I've disabled the logging for permissions, so basically it starts pretty well. And it runs as well. How long do I still have? Five minutes. 
Um, okay. Yeah, 25 minutes is not a lot for that. So now it's the time to choose. <laughs> you might forget that what I told you during this session. Everything is fine, you will get back to work, nothing will happen. But perhaps the guys or the woman next to you heard it and will create a library to read pictures. Might happen. No, um, to be more serious, now it's, it's your choice. Uh, the problem is that it shouldn't be a default choice. It's called risk mitigation. You should be aware of the risk and assess the risk and decide whether it's cost effective to create a policy file for your application or not. But remember that if you don't do it, you can do a lot of crap with the GVM because you can do everything. And since some of you told me they were afraid, I hope at least you will check because it's a huge security risk. And I cannot understand why everything now is secure but not the GVM. So thanks for your attention. You can read my blog, follow me on Twitter. There are sources for uh, the code that I showed you, both uh, the hoop stuff and the uh, Spring Pet Clinic with the policy file. And also I have, um, wrote um, like an article that details, uh, that details uh, much deeper, I mean, about securing the GVM. Because you can also sign jars and blah, blah, blah. So uh, we have like four minutes for questions. Any question? One question, yes. So the question is, if I grant all permission, does it defeat the purpose? Of course it defeats the purpose. My point was to use all permission only in conjunction with logging so I could create my policy file, my, the real one. Does that answer your question? Okay, other question. Yes, another question. Does it mean that you need 100%? Ah, uh, sorry, nah. yeah, I will need the mic. Sorry about that. At my age, you know, uh, it's not what it used to be. Does it mean that uh, you need 100% coverage to, have, uh, to be sure to have all the loggings? That's a very good question. Of course, you need to cover every screen or features in your application. But I guess you already have it, <laughs> right? <laughs> Is it possible to um, apply it only for the libraries you have? Uh, Sorry? Is, is it? it possible to apply the policy only for the libraries you have identified as external? No. Uh. No, at some point I was thinking perhaps every, every library could provide its own policy file. But the problem is if you are using a single feature of your library, then the policy file is again too much and it's not the least minimum privilege policy. So you, you have to do it on, on the end, in the end of the process. Yes. You. Sorry. Uh, no, actually, if you, if you, uh, that's a very good question. The question is how readable or viewable is this file? Okay. What's the alternative? The alternative is to read the entire application, not understanding what it does, because well, you you are too close. If with, with a bit of understanding of the syntax of this file, it's pretty readable, and then you can compare with what the application is supposed to do. And then if, if it tells you, yeah, I need to use reflection, you are using Spring, that's fine, because you know that Spring uses reflection. Uh, if you say, I want to connect to port uh, XYZ, then you might say, mm, why? 